A few weeks ago, I was asked by one of my subscribers to show how I would bind a table runner that has points on either end. Um, and at first, I didn't really think I would bother because there are many, many videos on YouTube showing you how to do this. But <laughs> being the idiot that I am, I don't necessarily follow their methods. So what you're about to see in this tutorial is my way of doing it. Now, is it the right way? No, not really. Is there a right way? Well, there are better ways, I am sure. But it's the way my mind works. And so for me, it works this way. So I know there'll be others of you out there that are very experienced with doing this and will definitely say, oh my God, why is he doing something like that? Well, it's just the way my mind works. So I'm sharing this with you. I'm also sharing with you some of my tips that I use to help me get it to work the way I want it to work. Now, I wish I had a better camera set up for doing this because there's a lot of close work here on my sewing machine and I tried to get them into the shot the best I could. And I apologize for, well, the lack of my camera skills, I guess. Um, and I hope this video doesn't confuse you too much, especially if you're a beginner and you've never attempted something like this before. Um, it isn't difficult. What's difficult is trying to explain it when you're not right here with me. So take from this what you will. I know it's not perfect, but it works for me. And if you want to see how other people do it, and I've said this in the video, just go to YouTube, do a search, and you will find many, many videos showing you many different techniques for doing uh, mitered corners on points. Okay, so I had a request to show how I bind something that has points and like a table runner. So as you can see here, this is a table runner I've been working on and I have these points and I'm about to put my binding on. So how does one do that? Okay, well, you flip your table runner down face uh, right side down, bad side up just like you would on a quilt if you were machine binding it. You stitch on your binding raw edge to raw edge and you come and you just stitch along a quarter of an inch from the edge of the table runner until you get to this point. Then what do you do? How do you attach, get this point folded properly because you're no longer on a right angle on a quilt you'd have a right angle. And so you would just stop a quarter of an inch from the edge and you would fold your quilt or your binding up and then back over on itself and carry on stitching. But how do you do it on this? Same way, actually. Don't let the angles get you all confused. So I'm gonna go over to the other camera and my sewing machine, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so I've got my sewing machine set up here with a quarter inch foot on it. It's my AccuFeed system, actually. And I've already done a couple of these corners on here. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Now, what I've been doing is, let me get things underneath here, and I hope you can see it. I have been sewing along a quarter inch away from the edge of the back of the table runner and I've been sewing along here. Now I've come to this corner. Now what do I want to do? So let's take a look at this corner. Okay, I'm sitting on my binding. That's not a good thing. Let's get all my binding. Do you ever get tangled up in your binding? I do all the time. Okay, let's just pull this out of our way right now. I hope you can see that. And here, let me get my stiletto. Here is my point on the table runner. The the corner basically is what I'm saying where these two come together okay so this is a weird angle it looks like a weird angle I've stopped a quarter of an inch from this edge down here so all I did for that was I took my ruler with a quarter inch seam allowance marking on it sorry lights went out um, I lined it up along the edge running down here on the quarter inch line and I just put a little mark if my chalk pencil would work kind of awkward okay just a little chalk mark right there and so I know where to stop 
my stitching, and I've already done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot. I'm just going to move my table runner around. It's not under the needle at this point. And I'm going to do what I normally would do. I'm going to pretend that this is a straight edge on my quilt. I'm just going to fold it up so that my fabric, my binding, is in line. And actually, I can feel where I've put that quarter inch where I stop stitching. So I've got my fold kind of pressed up against that. And then I'm going to bring it back down. Sorry for the strings. This fabric I'm using is very, very um, fraying, very freightable. And I'm just going to fold this down, this edge down, the fold, until it's in line with that little corner. Now you see, in a sense, what I've got here is exactly what I would have if it was on a quilt, except it's off on an angle. But I'm getting that angle by uh, thinking of this as being at 90 degrees. Is this making sense? I hope so. I'm going to do it again, so you'll see. So then I'm just going to drop my needle and, oops, not drop my needle yet. I'm just going to put my needle, line everything up a quarter of an inch from the edge, and I'm going to put my needle just at the edge of that fold, and I'm going to sew it. And I'm going to do this. This is just like on a quilt. Nothing fancy here. So I'm going to make my way down to where the next point starts. Now I'm approaching this corner, so I'm just going to take my ruler again, and my quarter inch seam line is right here, and I'm going to line it up along the edge of this other point, and just mark quarter inch my chuck pencil doesn't seem to want to mark very well okay can I see my mark yes I can and that's all that matters now of course there are many ways to do it this is the way that works best for me now when I get to that line I'm just slowing down I want to get my needle right on it, and I'm going to tie it off. Now, some people would sew off. I, I just use my automatic uh, tie-off system and cut it, and away we go. So, now I'm going to take my quilt, I'm going to pivot it so that this point, this edge, which is another point, is straight in front of me. Um, what would that be? Perpendicular to the machine. And I'm going to fold my binding over as if it was on a quilt. So it'd be going straight up. I bring it back. I like to use my stiletto to put it right on the edge. And that helps me to get a nice, neat, and straight fold. And there we have it. Put it back under the needle, just at fold, and carry on. One more, and we'll tie it off. Now this is the, the point at the very, very end of the table runner. So it is at a right angle. So what I was talking about, think of this like a quilt. This one's easy. As I just fold it up, make a nice 45 degree fold there and pull this down, line it up with the edge or edges and carry on. 
So this is taking me down to the last corner I have to do. Now, I'm coming to the point where I'm back at square one. I had done some of this before I turned on the camera. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit of the way because I need to join my ends. And that should give me enough to play with. Maybe a little bit more, I can come down. Okay, break thread, tie it off. Now I'm gonna take this over to my cutting table and I'm going to join my tail ends. And it's the same way as you would join your tail ends on doing a quilt, nothing different here. So when I have that done, I'll show you the next stage. That is how you bring everything to the front of the table runner and sew it all down. Okay, I'm gonna be really honest. When I took this off the sewing machine after sewing on the binding to the back of it and flipped it over, I was having some problems getting my mitered corners around the edges. And I'm not sure why. Um, you know, this should be done pretty much the same way as you do a quilt, but the problem here is it's optics, I think, the, the way the angles go. So I've done part of this already. So you can see here, um, I've come down here, I have a mitered corner here, I have a mitered corner here, I have a mitered corner up here. This point is easy to do because it's at a right angle, um, just like on a quilt. But these ones throw you off. But this is the way I found to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, if I've confused you completely, then just go to YouTube. There are hundreds of videos about how to do binding on points, okay? Um, this is how I do it. It's working for me, but there are other methods, and I think some of the methods there are probably better than the way I do it because there's a lot of line drawing, and I didn't really want to do a lot of line drawing because I'm lazy, but now I'm coming down here, and normally what I would do is I, of course, would clip this, pulling it to the front. This is machine, not hand, okay? So a hand is a little bit different. But when you get to this corner, what I would normally do is I would push this over here and fold this over and make a nice mitered corner, but they don't line up when I do it that way. Um, see, I would work probably more from this angle. Okay, I'm lying to you. <laughs> it works. Okay, I guess it has to do I don't know what it has to do with. Okay, so all you got to do is, when you come up to this corner, just crease it down. Make sure your binding is pulled all the way around to the front so you can work with it. Okay, so I've pulled this. Let me see if I can move it in a little closer for you. Okay, this is very awkward. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm clipping down here, uh, trying to keep things a little bit even. I get to this corner. So you can see there's a 45 degree there, but this is where I have the problem. Yeah, see, if I pull that over, I'm not gonna get that right. So what I have found is I do it from the other side and that makes the mitered corner. It would help if I'd been a little accurate, more accurate on getting my corners on the other side sewn in. There we go, we got a clip. So I've got a mitered corner right there. Okay, yeah, whatever works, okay? It's sort of like wrapping up a odd-sized Christmas present. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on. I'm going to go down. I like to clip my bindings at the front. I didn't always, this was goes with my quilt making. Um, I would just put them on the machine and hold them down and go around, but I have found it's a little bit better because I get things a little bit more even if I take the time to clip my binding all the way around the whole quilt or table runner or whatever I'm making. And I find it makes it easier for getting it in underneath the needle as well. I hate these little strings. Okay. 
I'm moving my way down and little frayed ends. I don't know if this is right or either, but sometimes I clip them off like right now if they're fairly long. If they're short enough, I just kind of tuck them under the binding. You can't have too many wonder clips. And wonder clips are great for binding. I know some people use pins. I'm not a pinner, but I am a clipper. Okay, so I'm approaching this next corner here. So I'm going to let the fabric tell me what way it's going to work. And that's the way the fabric's going to work right there. I'm off screen. Yeah, see? Just like you're doing the corners on a Christmas present, really. And you want to make sure your fabrics are lined up on the corner. You don't want anything bulging out. Just going to put a clip in here. And I have another nice, and you see the two points, I don't know if you can see that or not, but are lining up with each other. They were lining up with each other. Let me do this again. So there we have it. I'm all clipped on all my corners. I've got nice miters. I'm just doing another little check. And don't be afraid to add clips if you need to. So now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and you, you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to sew down the binding. I use uh, my stitch in the ditch foot for my AccuFeed system and I adjust the needle. I can move it over and I just sew about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the binding and that sews it up really nicely. Lots of people like to use hand binding on things like this. Um, I'm not a good hand sewer so I don't. I go with um, there's a thread. I want that thread off. I go with the sewing machine. Okay, I lied to you. I am going to show you how I stitched this just a little bit. This is my AccuFeed stitch in the ditch foot. Uh, if you have a Janome, you know what an AccuFeed is. It's basically a souped up walking foot. It holds, when you're doing layers, it holds things together very nicely. Um, if you don't have one of these, if you don't own a Janome, uh, Bernina has something similar. And if for any other sewing machine, they have their own systems or you can just get a standard walking foot. Either will work. But what I like to use with this, because this part of the foot will uh, has different ones that you can snap on, snap off. I've snapped on what they call the stitch in the ditch foot because it has a little metal guide right lined up with the center with the, the needle right with the needles in the center so what I do is I will put this under the needle and I'm not going to start right at the top I start mm, a few inches from my top of my quilt or in this case the table runner and I line up this edge right with the edge of my binding. Now that's too close, but I can move my needle over. So I will do that. I think I need my stiletto. I think I need to recalibrate my screen here. It doesn't work so well with my fingers. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving by a tenth of a millimeter my foot to the right. I usually go pretty much to about seven and that's about right. So I'm about an eighth of an inch from that edge of the binding. And now just put the stiletto away and now I just start to sew. So get everything lined up here under the needle put the foot down and away we go. Now, of course, I have to stop every two inches to take out my clips. But I find this gives me a fairly straight stitch. You do have to watch that this edge doesn't press up too tight against that uh, guide because then things will go a little wonky. Now, if you're really good at keeping your stitching straight, you know, 
you probably don't need one of these. Now I'm coming to this mitered corner, so this is where I like to use my stiletto. I take off the clip, make sure those two edges, that binding in the mitered corner are lined up, and I hold it down with my stiletto and carry on sewing. Now I stop just past that and I give it a couple or one um, stitch and I'm going to pivot. Now I've set up my machine so that my needle stays down. I can raise my foot and line it up and that looks pretty good. You want it as close as you can get to that. And I carry on. If I have to do minor adjustments along the way, I will. And if you've matched your thread fairly closely to your backing, um, and this is why people like to do hand binding, because what they can do is they, they will stitch with the machine on the front of the quilt or the table runner, pull everything to the back, and then hand stitch it, and they can hand stitch it uh, so close into where it comes over that you won't even see. They use like a whip stitch or something like that. You won't even see the stitching. As I said, I'm no good at hand sewing. Uh, there's bloodletting, so I don't do that. I do it this way. Will you be able to see my stitching on the back? Yes, you will. Um, however, uh, and it's right in there. However, it looks like part of the design and my, my thread is pretty much close to what I've got on the backing, so it's not that noticeable. Plus, it's a table runner. No one's going to be flipping it around. So I can live with that. If I save my own blood loss, I can live with that. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you the finished product. And here's the final result. And I think it turned out pretty good. And you can see that my corners are all mitered. And I'll just give you a little sh close up of each one. And so that worked out very nicely. Um, the thread that I picked for the top was sort of a pinky color. And so you can't really see the stitching there at all. And if you flip it over, Because I used a bobbin thread that is very close to the color of the quilt back, you really don't notice it either. And if you do look at it really that close, it looks like it's supposed to be there. Well, it is supposed to be there. So I hope I didn't confuse you too much about how to bind something that has points. As I said, it would be worth your while to check out several videos on YouTube. Just do a search. Uh, for that and you'll see other methods for doing it and you know everybody has their own method and whatever works for you and gets the job done and that's the best method to use.